Have you ever had a man end a relationship with you only to attach himself to the very next woman he met? In fact, maybe even go on to marry this person? I got to share with you, this seems to be a pattern that I've noticed over the last decade in particular in the dating, mating, and relating realm. In fact, it's such a pattern that I've gotten many comments on this lately from a previous video I did, and I thought I'd do a repeat video because I think it's important to address uh, why a man might choose one woman over another and what you can do about it. And please, ladies, stop chasing men because it seems like you have a propensity of chasing men when this happens instead of actually leaning into your sovereignty, your self-worth, your self-esteem. In fact, that's what my book is about. What the heck is self-love anyway? A journey of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. And I'm inviting you all to lean into that sovereignty within yourself because it doesn't matter whether or not he chooses the next woman. What matters most is do you love yourself enough to know in your heart of hearts that a great guy out there exists? Because many of you have adopted a philosophy of, of, of tr desperately trying to convince men to like you, desperately convince, desperately trying to convince men to love you who are incapable of love. And this is because we are, there is such a proliferation of emotionally constipated men and women. This isn't just singular to men. We have a demographic, a significant demographic of emotionally dysfunctional human beings that have weak emotional maturity and terrible relationship skills. That's right. The vast majority of humans have terrible relationship skills. This is why I work with so many women to shift that pattern so they don't attract those men who are dysfunctional and constipated. You can actually attract the men who are going to choose you on the very, get, very first go around. Are you with me on this? Because I hope you are. Okay, so I was watching a woman coach who talked about this very same subject, and she merely said, ladies, if you want, to ch if you want the man to choose you over another woman, is that you simply sit in your feminine energy and receive him. Just receive him. Be in your nice dress and just receive him. Really, is receiving the way it's going to work? Yeah, receiving is an important thing. But do you want to receive the wrong guy? Do you want to receive the guy that's going to work with, basically use you as his therapist? And so the minute he's healed with you, he goes and finds the very next woman to be the bright, shiny penny with. OK, that's what happens is many of you are operating as a man's therapist only to find out that he's going to choose the very next woman because you haven't stood in your power, your sovereignty, your self-worth and self-esteem. And in a few minutes, I'll talk about some, some ways that women give their power away. And I want you to ask yourself, do you do these very same things? Now, there's going to be some very real reasons why a man might choose one woman over another. There are some significant reasons, and we're going to talk about that right now. Let's talk about one. And by the way, this is in no particular order, okay? But number one, as I shared in, in, in the previous video, is the other woman that he meets is less effort than you. Now, what I mean by not less effort as if in you are, you know, she's low hanging fruit, although that could be the reason why a lot of men aren't capable of being in relationship with a strong, confident woman. That's true. A lot of men aren't capable of that. And some men choose what I call low hanging fruit to enter into relationship with. But I'll tell you something about the low hanging fruit woman. That's only a temporary relationship. So one thing I want to say to all of you that have noticed that men literally end a relationship with you and choose the very next woman, he might even marry that next woman. I'm going to say, statistically speaking, 75% of the time, that relationship isn't going to work out. So just because he did it doesn't mean it's going to work. And yet, an emotionally healthy man, an emotional grown-up man might choose a woman that fits in his lifestyle, though there isn't, so with sometimes we date from both men and women might date, like during COVID, for example, a lot of men and women dated from somewhat of a dependency perspective. This is even true for those men who are growers and builders. I think COVID caused many people to seek companionship, connection, and sex, 
but weren't capable of leaning into commitment. So what they have done is once a man is healed, he might say, I'm going to choose a woman who truly fits in my lifestyle, where we actually share the same values, the same uh, passions in life, whereas he might not have with the woman he was previously with. Now, number two, you know, sex is a big part of the equation. Some people aren't as sexually compatible as others. Um, you know, here's the thing. This is a really tricky one. This is a tricky one for you ladies, because I know many of you don't want to enter in relationship with a man who's not a good lover. That's kind of the risk. You. This is the, one of the challenges that many of you have expressed to me is, Jonathan, I want to wait to have sex with someone, but at the same time, I might want to have sex early to determine if he's a good lover. I might want to make sure that his penis isn't the size of a pencil. Okay. And I've heard this many, I've heard a lot of you women tell me you've met guys like that. And I feel sorry for those men that have that. Um, and yet this, it's kind of like, um, uh, Goldilocks, you know, the porridge, you know, not too big, not too small, just right. You know, many of you are happy with the just right. And yet many of you want to explore sex because you want to make sure the sex is good. Well, the same is true with men. It might be that you're not sexually compatible. And then he, and then he's like, this doesn't fit for him. And he wants to be with someone else. I am hoping that sex isn't the only criteria because I'm hoping there's more to the relationship for both of you if the sex isn't great. But for some men, that's such a significant part of their needs that they might shift relationships for that reason alone. But that's usually not the real reason, but that can be. Number two, the emotional, more importantly, the energetic connection with the person that they're with isn't that strong. They might like the person, but it isn't over the top like them. I see a lot of women accept men who give crumbs because they like the woman, but it's not over the top like. Folks, many of you know I'm in relationship. There's a picture of my sweetheart, Marie. I'm going to tell you, I had dated some women prior to her. I'd been connecting with some women, and there were nice connection with them. It was nice. But for some reason, when I met Marie, it felt over the top. And it wasn't just looks. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't. It was really something, an intangible. Energetic connection is an intangible that you can't really quantify. You can't qualify it. It just is there. It's not. You know, we, we sometimes term, you know, use the term chemistry, but it's not chemistry. Chemistry is more the sexual arousal we feel with someone. Whereas energetic connection, which might be associated with chemistry, is really the serotonin being released in our brain. So when we think of chemistry in the initial stages, we think of dopamine. Dopamine is like crack cocaine. And I'll snap, give myself a shot, an injection of crack cocaine to illustrate this. But early stages of chemistry is usually based on lust, okay? When you have a real energetic connection with someone, serotonin is released in our brain, which is the feel-good feeling of love, okay? Real, more like the calm place of love, more like the, the um, this person, I just feel good being around. You know, ultimately, when a man commits, he commits usually with through someone who's his lover, but more importantly, he just feels good being around her. And many of you women are chasing men, hoping that they'll feel good around you. But let me tell you, it's there from the, it, listen, maybe not the first date per se, maybe not the second date per se, maybe not the third date. But if a man sees you four times and he isn't over the top into you, and I don't mean love into you to get you in your pants, okay? Let's differentiate. You can tell the guys who want to get in your pants, they lead with sex. You know, they're always making sexual innuendos. The grower and builder type of men, those men who genuinely want a serious relationship, they might want sex. They might drop an innuendo here, but they're not leading with sex. They're leading with actually wanting to get to know you because they feel good energetically around you. Okay. And if a man isn't actively putting energy towards you non-sexually, if it's ambivalent, it's like, Hey, it sends text message. You know, I'm really busy. I've got businesses. I've got, it's always, you know, busy is the number one excuse men say to validate their reason for not being into you because it's easy to, to use 
busy as the excuse of saying, I'm just not that into you. And that's what most men do. You know, the men who are genuinely interested in you, they are continually progressing the relationship forward. They're continually trying to spend time with you. Energetic connection. Number four, higher compatibility. Some people, you know, a friend of mine once dated a man who, you know, they shared the same passion of snow skiing, and yet they that was it. Their lifestyles were different. Their philosophies, they're different. Their ideologies were different. They shared one passion of snow skiing and everything else about them was different. And some men will view that and they, they, they get attached to someone because they share the same passion and will spend time with that person because they share whatever that passion is, my, my, by the way. But they realize that they don't fit into this man's life. They're not compatible with one another. And he'll end a relationship with her and choose a woman who actually fits into his lifestyle. You know, many of you know I was in a long, or we were at long distance dating. I wasn't interested in long distance dating. It wasn't until I realized that her lifestyle and the balance of her life is compatible with mine. It just needed a little bit of tweaking. Well, we had serious conversation to determine that tweaking to make that happen. And many of you are afraid to even speak up. I want to encourage you all, if you've dated a man three or four times and he's acting a bit ambivalent, to simply say, whatever his name is, Tim, Tom, Jonathan, I like you. I like you. Do you like me? Ask him that. Do you like me? And then see how he responds. And most likely he'll respond in some kind. Just say, well, then I'd like to explore a relationship with you. And then you see his metal. You see who he's made of. You see his character. Because in that moment, you see if he's serious about wanting commitment or is he going to give you the usual excuses men know, say. And you all know the excuses. I'm busy. I don't know if I feel, I don't know if I want a serious relationship. I'm not feeling it yet. Well, that's a fair statement. I'm not feeling it yet. But let me tell you, most men by the fourth date. Now, let's exclude the meet and greet, but four dates, okay? Four dates after the meet and greet, okay? Four dates. If he's, other than he needs, he just needs that, so long as he's not seeking a therapy from you and he's not seeking sex from you and he's not dysfunctional and need you just fill the space. Men who are growers and builders, they will actively pursue a relationship with you sooner rather than later. Because number five says that he's in a good place in his life. You know, several years before I met Marie, I was a train wreck. I just lost my 19-year-old son. There's a picture of Connor right there in the Obey shirt. I was a train wreck for a while. I wasn't in a good place to entertain a relationship. No matter what has happened in a man's life, if he's not in a good place with you, you might have spent that time helping him heal unbeknownst to yourself. So he actually gets prepared to choose the next woman because you happen to be the person that helped him heal. And then guess what? He wants to be a bright, shiny penny to someone new. So he's got to be in a good place in your life before you should strongly consider a relationship with a man. Number six is timing. Timing plays a role. You know, Marie and I met a year earlier online, but it wasn't the right time. The time that we met was the right time. Sometimes it's just the timing. And the timing you met a guy isn't the right time for him just for all the reasons I've expressed. And what happens is the next person he meets just happens to be right time. And number seven, and this is the most important thing many of you need to hear. The woman he's with doesn't love herself. She doesn't respect herself. And the next woman has that self-love piece. I talked about that in my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? By the way, there's a link below to get a copy of my book. She loves herself. She has self-worth, self-respect, self-confidence, self-esteem. Because here's the bottom line. Many of you are giving your power away to men. You're just giving your power away to men. And if you need some examples to illustrate this, let me share what you do. The relationship is all on his terms. You abandon your standards and boundaries with a man and that's giving your power away. And your standards is really defining what does the relationship look like for you. An example of a standard I share, this is my standard standards. 
is a relationship where you spend two, three, or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in your personal and your professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together, or getting married. That's a standard. And many of you have that standard. You meet the guy and you're like, I'm just going to go at his pace because I'm supposed to sit my feminine and let him lead. And if I let him lead, he'll claim me. And if I just act like a doormat, he'll claim me. Ladies, Cinderella or princess energy is, is only going to attract the more dysfunctional men. The women who stand in their power have a get better chance of attracting a great guy. Number two. You're afraid to speak your truth with a guy. Oh my God. So many of you are literally, you're like, I, if I put duct tape over my mouth, this is your ability to speak. You're barely able to speak because you're afraid to speak your truth. Listen, right now, I want everyone to make an agreement with me right now, right in the chat box or post a comment, Jonathan. From this day forward, I will speak my truth and I will do it in a kind and loving way because, because if it's sincere and from the heart, I can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Will everyone agree to state, I will speak my truth going forward from this day forward? Please write that down. Number three. When the relationship ends, all you do is focus on him. It's all about him. It's about him. And it's about why, he, why didn't he love me enough? Why didn't he do this? Why didn't he do that? Folks, the minute you make it about him, he has your power. What's the benefit of giving the power to him? All it does is, and by the way, you become a magnetic attractor for more men to give your power away. I want everyone to stand in their power today. Number four, waiting for him to initiate contact. It's always, why do men ghost? Why do men disappear? Why do men stop texting? Well, are you texting him? By the way, if a man goes silent for a couple of days, have you reached out to him? Have you simply said, hey, I'm sensing, by the way, I had a woman once, I, I listen, I dated a woman briefly. We were physically intimate. The sex wasn't that good, to be honest with you. Sorry, that was my, that's my truth. And for whatever reason, I wasn't feeling energetic connection. And I was, was really just pondering it for a couple of days and I didn't reach out to her. So you know what she did? She reached out, said, Jonathan, I'm sensing something's off between us. Is my gut right? And I said, your gut is right. Something is off. I'm just not feeling it in this relationship. So we had, and sadly, we had a text conversation. We didn't have a verbal conversation. But the reality is, is by initiating that text, she got me to open up. You can do the same thing. Number five, you stop doing your pre-relationship life, your interests, your activities. You abandon yourself to make yourself available to men. So many of you are doing this. I want you to stop it. Number six, feeling like you can't live without him. Like as if he's the only, you, I, listen, I get it. You've been with a man where you felt something special, unlike what you may have felt in the previous decade or two or three. I get it. But guess what? It can happen again. And guess what? It can happen again and again. When you are a magnetic attractor, when you've adopted the philosophy, it is raining great men, it is raining great men, it is raining great men. You can always find a man you feel great with. And lastly, you think the other person is the only person in the entire universe who will love you and have this chemistry. That is fantasy thinking. That is giving your power away. And let me tell you something, ladies. Many of you argue for your limitations. You have this capacity to gaslight yourself. Do you know the ego is, by the way, the greatest narcissism we have is the gaslighting we do to ourselves, the way we rationalize our, our behavior to, to uh, you know, to not what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's um, to argue for our limitations. I got to tell you something. Many of you are arguing for your limitations because you gaslit in yourself in believing that he is the only person ever you will feel this way. Let me ask yourself, have you been in love more than once? If you have, 
It can happen again and again and again. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. If it is, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. In the description below, you can schedule a discovery call with me right there, jonathanasley.com coaching to see if working with a coach is right for you. My job is to help you do a better job of vetting these men so you don't find yourself with men who leave you for someone else.